I will now call the <laughs> September 23rd meeting of the Commission to order. Um, the first item will be introduction of the commission members. Pat Fairport, Secretary. Don Goodrich, Chairman. Ken Stevens, Vice Chairman. Peter Samardak, Commissioner. Lou David Alton. Dave McCollum, and Lynn Butman's agent. Dion. Oh, Dion Craig, Reporting Secretary. Beth Bagnett, Director of the Before we start this meeting, because it's going to be a little bit different, um, this is kind of the, the uh, schedule we'll run tonight for the meeting. Uh, the first part of the meeting will be the presentation by the applicant, uh, his attorney, and his engineer. That will be followed by questioning and comments from the commission and from the officer. At that time, even though it is not a public hearing, we have, a, we have decided to allow the public to speak. Um, and when we get to that point, I will explain exactly how we will work that so that we can you know, maintain some order here. Um, and then uh, Mr. McCollum will have a, a final statement after that. Okay. Um, before we get started, if, if I can advise, if, if anyone in the audience wants to follow along with the order of events for the agenda tonight, there are copies of it on the dais, which have um, public participation guidelines on them, which can kind of give you an idea for how to guide your comments to the commission should you decide to step forth in this Oh. If I get sick tomorrow, you're getting an email. Our first is allergies. No, it's allergies. Mr. Marcus, your team. I'm going to turn it over to the engineer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just to get a full record on the Marcus. I'm here to a special meeting uh, on the uh, removal of the fill. Hopefully, it's all been done timely to everybody's satisfaction. I hope. Um, and I just. At this point, the application is, uh, is, is before you should be winding down because most of the comments uh, have been addressed. And I'd let Mike uh, pick it up because he's pretty happy. Well, for the record, Mike Nzuko, professional engineer, my office is the very representative of the applicant. And I did send the email to David copies of the plans that were revised. I just want to submit just two full sets of. Uh, the revised plans. Thank you very much. As the revision date on the title block, but the only two plans that were revised were the ones that are on the screen. Okay. All right. And so we, as Neil had mentioned, we we did get comments from my peers. We responded, and it's my understanding that they didn't come back with any additional comments, and they were satisfied with the responses that we were given. And we had added the cross section that David had asked for, which is going through. Anyway, feel free to use the mouse so, if you. If you <coughs> yeah, it's okay. It's just the cross section that's shown here that I just pointed out is through this area here. <coughs> section A and A. We'll show the retaining walls and the driveway, the elevations on either side. So that was the change there. Mike, where is that on the, on the, on the plan? It'll be on the bottom center panel. Right here. Right here. Oh, okay. The profile is right here. Okay, good. Thank and you. The section is here. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Can you make that bigger? He's, he's, he's trying to he's trying to look on from a distance. Just figure out giving us up to look on but I have to here. Oh okay. Cross section here, section AA where it's shown through is up here. So that that was the change to that plan. And then the only other thing we did for the site utilities is with a question about you know, backing up water onto the adjoining property on the one that's got clogged and capacity. So we just added another same size pipe, doubling the capacity of that culvert that we show underneath, underneath the driveway. So those are really the two changes that we made. Um. <clears throat> Anything from anyone else? If we are, okay, then I'll open up to the commission to ask any questions or make any comments. Anyone on the commission have any comments or questions concerning this application? David? Okay. 
if, if I may clarify something, Mike, I would just like to say, um, not that I'm going to speak um, verbatim for Mr. Ritchie, our consulting engineer from uh, Wright Pierce Engineering Group. Um, there is a continued disagreement with um, or between you and Mr. Ritchie as to how um, if there are components of the stormwater management system that will be running underneath the building, mm -hmm. as well as um, I think it's the um, the level spreader that's at the base of the retaining wall. If, if I'm using the correct term, I think that's what that was. Yes. Um, I think the design of that, um, as much as it, there, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any um, revisions made to that. So, based on that, Mr. Rich doesn't have any additional comments with consideration that, um, based on the comments that he provided to you previously, uh, there haven't been any changes made to those, and he's still mis disagreeing about that. Uh, well, the only thing I would disagree with that is he had made a comment about the frost protection. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, we, we ended up revising the details just to show that, additionally, additional frost protection underneath, 42 inches underneath the bottom of the riprap. Okay. So, uh, that was one of the concerns that he had, but that's how we addressed it. Okay. Right. And as far as the pipe under the building, it's, the, the, you know, there's pipes under buildings all the time. Right. There's heating pipes, there's soil on pipes, there's, there's water main pipes. So, it's not a new concept by any stretch of the night. Okay. Right. No, no, not this time. Yeah. Um, you know, I have concern with this retaining wall and what it's going to do to the adjacent or four property over there. Um, your elevation for the top of the retaining wall, where it is, is 516. At the end of the retaining wall, like if you come around like an L, is that 516 or is it higher? It's roughly 516 because that's the, that's the elevation of the parking area. So it doesn't change much. Okay. All right. And then, the, thank you for adding the second pipe. Um, when it comes out into daylight, going towards the wetland on the property line, right. how high is it from the base? At grade. At grade. Yeah. Okay. So what's prevented? Again, you know, I'm worrying about this pipe, what's prevent it from getting frozen shut? It happens all the time. If you don't dig them out, it's going to freeze up. It's at, it's, at, it's at grade, and the grade is pretty much level across this whole thing. There's no right. way that's, that, that's going to freeze up. Well, what I'm thinking is that grade, let's say... And the only time pipes freeze up mm -hmm. is if there is a constant base flow. And you're going to find that if you have, say, off of a roof. Mm -hmm. If you get a warm day, it starts mm -hmm. melting, right. it's dripping down, then, it's, then it, you get a cooler weather at night, it'll it'll freeze a pipe. Or if you have, let's say, a footing drain mm -hmm. that's draining you know, your foundation right. and that line's dripping out at the end, it might freeze up. You'll okay, see that so where there's a, a curtain drain, similar situation where you have a small base flow, okay. but not here. All right. So. I, so you need constant flow. Here's what I'm looking at. If I'm reading the elevations correctly, the front property is all sloped to the back right, of the property. Let's say you get two feet of snow in the winter. Or whatever. Two feet of snow starts warming up during the day, starts melting. That water is going to go into the ground and also surface to the back of the property, right. into that pipe. Now you got your constant flow. Okay. What if those pipes that are under those two feet, melting snow going down to the foot, nighttime it freezes. The freezing thawing will that not freeze the pipe? It's not going to freeze the pipe because okay. when ice, let's say the snow is melting, mm -hmm. that's a small base flow. Right. You've got 10 inch pipes. Okay. So you right. know, that's not going to be an Because of the diameter. <laughs> it's not going to be an issue. Okay. All right. Okay. John, if I, if I could just jump in real quick, sure. I'm, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, and this again is to mention this year, though, and I guess it's kind of everybody. Um, we opened this site plan review, or we accepted this on July, on June 24th, and the first meeting that we had, the first two meetings that we had on this were July 29th and August 5th. 
I know um, we've already gone through an iteration or two of how these site plans look now, um, but apart from us five and the applicants team, I, I think it would do everyone well to kind of just give a refresher of, of what's being proposed and where on the site. Um, if Mr. Mazuka wouldn't mind, mind just giving us a brief walkthrough of what the components of this project are, just so everyone has an understanding, I, I think it would be um, great. Sure. Uh, I'll just, I think I'll just stay on this plane here because it says the site, pretty much the site and site utilities. Sure. So it's, it's a multi-family, multi single building, L-shape. There's 11 two-bedroom units. <coughs> Site served by uh, sewer. The applicant is bringing in the water line from the from Taylor Avenue. They'll bring it up just past the site. They'll run the water main in to service the building. There's a stormwater management system and a drainage system. So we're picking up flows, you know, off-site here in this area as well as the the center or portion of the property that's. Owned by the yeah, that's me. property owner. So there's drainage there that we just talked about, and you've got some drainage on the <coughs> sort of on the north side, or east, I'm sorry, the western side, and that drains into an inlet here, and it drains into a system. That's the pipe that we just talked about going underneath the building. We have the retaining walls to elevate the site to be able to get the stormwater management system in, which is here, and there's another set of galleries at the end, near the entrance and all that is draining to this area here because it pretty much all drains down towards the north and we have a level spreader which you know, was a question earlier about that in that, in that location and then the parking is pretty much all in front of the building. Can you review what areas, on based on what is on that plan, what areas this commission is, is going to be considering uh, for the <coughs> purposes of this application? Well, there's, there's, 100 foot right. yeah, there's, 100, there's a regulated area around this wetland system, which is basically the discharge point of that drainage that comes off of Good Hill Road. Okay. And then you've got another off-site pond that's on St. Mary's property. So we, we took 100 feet from that. And then I think it's about like three, five acres in total of regulated area between those two. Okay. And then just so that um, there's an understanding of what activities are taking place within both of those regulated opportunities, <coughs> you have the, the placement of fill to establish the driveway Correct. and the retaining walls. Correct. And you also have a portion of that 11-unit building that falls within the... Uh, yeah, a uh, very small portion. Right. The, the, on the, the western area, if I, if I have my bearings correct. And then a portion of the underground stormwater management system and its components. And utilities. And utilities. Anything else? Uh, I mean, you got stormwater, utilities, driveway, retaining walls, a partial building. Uh, grading. Okay. okay. So, I, I, I know I, I, I thank you for uh, rehashing this. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page as to what we're going to be discussing tonight. And so those two areas and the activities that are within them are going to be the, the basis of what discussions will be. From the More than a quick question. The, the drainage for the paved parking area, yes. as the storms uh, drains for that, um, where are they located? And where were they empty empty into the pipe that goes into the wetland? Correct. Well, it's all of the roof and driveway <coughs> will run into, most of it will run into this larger stormwater management system that's located under the parking area. <coughs> There's another small one here that's picking up a section of the, the driveway that pitches towards Whitfield Road. So that'll, the main one will pick up the buildings, parking areas, and I'd say most of the driveway. And that'll all drain into that level spreader, as well as the off-site stuff here and the two pipes that we talked about earlier. And the storm drains, are there any kind of oil separator or anything built into it? Uh, no. 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 
9, 10, and 11 on the bottom square there. Runoff water is going from where to where? From the building? Off the building, yes. Yeah. Uh, like the line that's going. Yeah, there's roof drains here, there's roof drains here, and then there's roof drains here. We just put multiple, multiple lines in typically. They're all going to the same spot? Yes. They're all going into this detention system. So, then, okay. one of the things I look at when looking at a permit is how it affects the neighbor, the, the water. Mm -hmm. How, you know, the runoff is constant. I can't remember a permit where the water hasn't been equal running off in the same spots and all that. Obviously, I have a concern with this wall because I'm just seeing this dam of, like, happening here for this, you know, we're, we're shifting how all the water goes. It's, it's a smooth flow right now off the whole back of the property, focusing on the one spot. And thank you for putting the second pipe in there. Focusing on that one spot. So I was, you know, you could tell I'm having a concern with this section. Okay. Tell me why I shouldn't be concerned with this section. Well, I think I've mentioned a number of reasons why you should be But if you're talking about specifically the flow off the neighbor's property, I mean, right now, it, it's sort of spread out with the contours. But right. obviously, when you put up, a, a, say, a barrier, in this case, the driveway, mm -hmm. you have to pick up the water. So it comes off the site, comes onto our property, it gets directed to by the wall and or grading, it gets directed to the inlet. <coughs> And then we bring it across here. The reason, one of the reasons why the level spreader was we're trying to mimic that, because this is sort of a broad, flat area here, and all of this kind of sheet blows down. So we're just trying to mimic that as much as we can, as best we can, so we're not having, you know, say, one point discharge. We didn't tie all this drainage into one spot and then dump it out in, in a point discharge. So we're trying to replicate the existing conditions. And the other thing, too, is, you know, the new stormwater guidelines, the ones that you try, you will try to enforce, the 2004, 2004 stormwater yeah. uh, manual, is you're basically holding an inch of rainfall before you outlet any water. Right. So uh, under this design, you're technically getting less water. I, mean, I know you say it doesn't, it's never the same, it's always more, but it's, in this case here, you're actually you're going to have a chance for that water, say a one-inch storm event, to get into the system without any discharge and have it. But are you holding more water because you're making more, what's the word, impervious soil? Well, you are, right. and that's where the rest of the storage comes into play. But you're still you still have an outlet control device <coughs> to limit your flow, and that's why there's so much storage here. So but basically, you really are the same amount of water is going off the property. It's just spread out over a longer period of time. Right. Because it's being held in that. With the caveat that, as I just mentioned, with the, with the water quality volume, you have to hold that before you can release any flows. Right. So, as I said, on the smaller storm events, you're not going to see any water coming out of that pipe. Because it'll be held in the It'll be held. Anything else? I don't have any additional comments. I'm sorry, I don't have any permit on that one. That pipe's not in the stormwater. Uh, that direct, that's direct out, right? Yeah, this is yes. yeah, anything that was basically off-site. Right. We were just kind of passing it. through. Anything that was impervious and mm -hmm. would be put into stormwater. Thank you. Commission members, anything else? Nothing. Okay. Then we will now um, open this up to the public. Um, and the manner in which we will do this is. Um, if anyone has a question or a comment to make concerning this, um, you raise your hand, you'll be called upon. We ask that you come up front and either sit in the chair or stand, give your name and address, and address your comments or questions to the commission. At no time shall there be any kind of ongoing conversation between the public and the commission or the public. To me, questions and comments will be voted after the first round of comments that are made. Okay? Yes. I'm Kristen Duran. I live at 12 Good Hill for the mm -hmm. records. Just sure. sure. Last name is G as in Gary. And then Iron, I R O N as in Nancy. 
Um, on behalf of Good Hill, I'd like to request the commission to ask the applicant um, for a 30-day extension to continue reviewing the site plan. Um, the residents of Good Hill have hired a soil scientist, Stephen Danzer, who was unable to come tonight. Um, he has been out to the site, the wetlands area on um, the Conti property, in addition to the St. Mary's property, and he has um, concerns. And we would like to have him come to the October 28th meeting as he is pulling together a report of such findings. Um, but he wasn't able to have that prepared for this evening. So <coughs> we would like an extension in order for him to come and express such findings and discuss it with the commission. Do you have a letter from him requesting? I do. I have a letter from him for the for you. Yeah, you. Can I come forward? Okay. I have a couple of copies if you'd like them. Most importantly, you get the second time. I'll take the copy. Okay. Would you like to copy? Would you like to copy the letter? Okay. We can just hold it. See one. Okay. okay. Each one else. I'll give you that. Yeah. That's right. Can you show the applicant? All right. Uh, any other? We'll, we will address that shortly. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. <coughs> Hello, uh, Ryan Cornish. I live at 21 Goodhill. Can you spell your last name? C-O-R-N-I-S-H. Um, with the preliminary reports that we've seen from the soil scientists, um, this plan is essentially defective on its face due to um, an inaccurate map of the lot and the wetlands to the west of the lot. Um, the township and the builder um, at the last meeting, we discussed that they um, did soil testing on the lot to the north, the Conti property, number seven. Uh, no soil samples or anything were done on the property of the west, the St. Mary's property. Um, the wetlands on St. Mary's property not being tested. Um, our soil scientists found an inaccuracy with the essentially the border of the wetlands. Um, I think that we should stop everything essentially where it is now until an appropriate border is found and the soil sample and the uh, scientific findings uh, have been essentially evaluated. Um, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know what is criminal or not. Um, I've never looked into these things. I'm completely, woefully ignorant in most of these things. Uh, never provided false information knowingly or unknowingly to a committee. Uh, I'm not attempting to um, accuse or impugn anyone in the room, um, but they've used a map that's essentially inaccurate in the site plan, and the committee should look into this. Um, everything regarding the site to the west has not been essentially evaluated appropriately in our estimation and our scientist's estimation. That's all I'd like to say. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. <coughs> Is there anyone else that has a question or a comment? Okay. Um, I will address the letter a little bit momentarily, but I'd like first to address your comments. And Mr. Marcus, I think you should really address those comments as far as the site samples and the incorrect site map. What is your response to that? Well, it's a pretty uh, tough allegation against our soil scientists. Uh, but I will tell you that having been on a lot of sites in the last 40 years, mm -hmm trying to figure out whether they are properly flagged, that two qualified soil scientists can stick their auger into the ground, pick it up, take their little chart for coloring, and, and, and spend 10 minutes arguing about what the variations are. It is not exactly, uh, it's not an exact science which you measure with real uh, tools. So I will tell you that soil scientists can disagree on where the actual soil changes. I mean, basically, they go out and they dig there and they look and they, then they dig over here and then they decide, well, somewhere in between here is the line. It's not, ex it's not exact. So the suggestion that further work needs to be done to the west, which is the St. Mary's property, uh, first of all, there's no indication that St. Mary's has consented to any of this work on this property, so that's a bit of a problem 
uh, for Dr. Danzo, actually. Um, and I'm not sure that it's going to add a tremendous amount because we are dealing only with work that's within the 100 foot upland review area. So quite honestly, if, it's, if the line's off by 10 feet or 15 feet, at the end of the day, it's not going to have a significant impact on the issues that you have to deal with here. Remember, this is an affordable housing application. And the real question is, are there, are there no accommodations that could reasonably be made to address health and safety issues? So if you find that, and by the way, we're, we're going to probably close this matter this evening, because quite honestly, uh, Dr. Danzer's letter is, is a little bit scant in terms of suggesting what he intends to do and what his timetable is to do it. And unfortunately, I've had experience with Dr. Danzer over the years, and quite honestly, I'm not sure that he's going to do what you need to evaluate the site. Your, your, your consultants have already been out there, and quite honestly, uh, um, from what Mike has presented this evening, we've addressed their concerns. But the, the fact of the matter is, just assume for a second that they determine that the wetlands line on St. Mary's is closer uh, to the property. We're still beyond the, we're still, you know, only within the upper review area. Unless they're suggesting that somehow there are wetlands on the site, and there's no reason to think that. I mean, it, 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 you guys have been out there, and in reality, there's visually no reason to think that the wetlands are on the site itself. So the question really is, what benefit is there to doing this study? However, the good news is, the good news is that after this hearing is closed, if Dr. Danzer wants to go out and redo the wetlands, um, he can bring those issues to the Planning and Zoning Commission because they're the ones who will determine whether the site is a threat to public health and safety. The, the, the issue is that you need to determine whether this development, as proposed, is going to have any likely impacts on the wetlands. Quite honestly, your question, as I was listening to it, was a good question. Fabulous. Belongs at the Planning and Zoning Commission. Your question was, well, I'm worried about the sheet flow out here. And that's not the way. It's a, as I said, I don't suggest that it's not appropriate. It's not what we're concerned with at this commission. Our question is, how does it affect wetlands out here, which are shown on the map? And how would it affect the wetlands if, if they were uh, 10 feet off? Um, but the fact of the matter is that this seems to be a pretense to go after, to try to raise concerns which aren't legitimate based on common, just a common sense approach. You go out there and you say, this isn't a 30 acre site with pristine uh, swamps that we're worried about in a, in, 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 in a, a natural habitat for uh, endangered species. And this is a developed <coughs> residential neighborhood, and this is a building law. I mean, uh, with all due respect, I think that we want to design it so it doesn't have any impacts negatively on the wetlands. And you've heard uh, Mike's presentation, we're talking about basically no disturbance to the wetlands, and we're doing a hydrological balance, which is basically we used to call it zero net increase of in runoff uh, during the storm events. It's explained it very well as to how they retain the water and discharge it. So the natural pre-development conditions will occur post-development. So with respect to the, the, uh, the last minute uh, request, um, I don't think that it's warranted here. However, if Dr. Danzer goes out and finds that there are other wetlands that need to be addressed, that is something that, that, that can be brought back to the attention of the commission uh, in a different <coughs> format. But at this point, um, I just, there's not enough in this. I mean, this is just a, a request. Well, well this happens on the 30 days. And Mike will now tell you the real reason why it doesn't apply. Well, I think this is an important reason, is that this, all of the flow, excuse me, 
all of the flow that's on the site flows in a northeast direction, so it doesn't even flow over towards the St. Mary's property. The, the, there's, a, there's a watershed boundary at the stone wall, and then, like I said, this all drains that way. And what's on the other side up there? Is there a wetland up there, Mike? Where? Well, they have this wetland here. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like draining that way, isn't it? Well, this, yeah, all of this is draining this way now. We're not changing. We're not changing that. That's why we had to put this inlet over here. But it's draining into a wetland. <clears throat> it is, but this, what I'm saying is we're, we're not impacting the, the one pond. that's being questioned, the pond. Oh, okay. That's a, that was my only point. Okay. Well, my first comment is, is that, uh, um, and this is my response to you, Mr. Marcus, our responsibility is not just to the wetlands, it is also to the hunting for the upland review area. Right. So we do need to look at what is happening, not just to the wetlands, but what could be happening to the upland review, which leads into the wetlands. Right. Um, as far as having another expert, um, I don't think you can give an opinion about another scientist's capabilities of doing something. Right. We as a commission have a responsibility to uh, listen to both an applicant and to the public. And the public has presented a, a concern and has hired another scientist which is in great disagreement with, with your scientists. We don't know that. We don't know that yet. But we, we don't know. Okay, but we, we, we need to hear what he has to say before we can make that decision. To confirm whether or not there are any disagreements. We believe, the commission believes, that we need to hear what that soil scientist has to say before we can say, well, we, you're really basically in the same place. Oh, oh, there is a big difference. We don't know that until we hear what he has to say. So, I mean, that's a problem that because at this point he's a dollar, a dollar short and a dollar late. But the, but the but the letter was presented to us. We've accepted the letter. They do have a soil scientist who wish to present information, and we do need to do that. And we do need to do it within the time of this application, and that is why they have requested the 30-day extension. David, okay. you had something you wanted to say. Uh, thank you. Just my, my comments are going to be brief. Uh, that whether or not this application has any of association with 8-30G is, is irrelevant for the purposes of this commission. So the concerns for health, safety, and welfare, while they may be of concern with planning and zoning, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I don't think they should be focused on that, and neither should anyone else here in this room. Um, the, the second thing I would want to say is that um, the Commission should have an accurate and agreed on determination as to how much activity is taking place within the regulated upland review area. Um, it, it should be on the record because that's, that's going to be one of the components for the consideration for their decision. And if there's a, dis, a discretion or a discrepancy that's found by uh, Mr. Danzer in saying, okay, if there's actually more wetlands, on the St. Mary's Cemetery property than was originally found to be, the Commission should know that. Um, whether or not that's actually found in Mr. Danzer's report is going to be determined, but we, they, they should be given an opportunity to review that be, before a decision is made. My, my last <coughs> comment would, would be um, in reference to what Mr. Kerfoot said, and I think we have to make a distinction between a direct impact to a wetland and an indirect impact to a wetland. And that is, Mr. Perfort's concerns are about what happens if water gets clogged behind an outlet and then suddenly perhaps gets discharged in the direction of that wetland. But I think his concerns were to make sure that the way the system is designed is that it can, if that flaw presents itself, that the system can still function and not create a condition where it adversely impacts the well. And I, I think that's an indirect impact. In, 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 am I paraphrasing what you are saying exactly? Yes. So I, I think that's just some clarification that the Commission wants, and I think it needs, <coughs> before it makes a decision. And, um, Can I add one more thing? Sure. No, no, no. Um, in receiving this first application, it seems like a relatively simple application. Mr. Draper and his, his uh, people have presented what appears to be a, a proper application. And we have heard your information from the engineer, from a lawyer, from a soil scientist. Uh, we want to treat you fairly. However, I do believe since another soil scientist has been brought into the mixture, 
that we do, we, we owe the public um, the time to listen to what this other scientist has so we can make an honest decision. I think we can only make an honest and clear decision once we hear that soil scientist. It may turn out the same way, but we need to hear from that other soil scientist. And in order to do that and still be able to complete this application within time, we need a 30-day extension. Thank you. I, 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 just yeah. I think what the commission is asking for is asking for an accommodation uh, by asking for the extension. I know that the I, I know that you're on a time crunch, and I know what that's like. We all know what that's like. We've been there, done it enough. I think that some accommodations can be made, for, um, and one being, I think, Neil, that in I believe an email you sent, um, you know, the the soil scientist should submit something within the next two weeks to give your soil scientists time to review the materials that are being submitted. And I think that's fair. I think that um, the commission should consider doing some type of a special meeting or a special presentation, a, a special meeting, obviously, in order to hear from the soil scientist, in order to hear from your soil scientist, if there's disagreement between the two. I think it's irrelevant for us to be discussing if there's more wetlands in the St. Mary's Pond area versus down the road or whatever, you can't do, we can't have those type of discussions until you hear so from the, the soil yeah. scientists. So I think that's very irrelevant at this point. But I, I think that it's not much for the commission to ask you to accommodate to receive this information and yep. make their decision. Here's what the 30 fashion. days would do. Give me uh, the extension. Excuse me, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, that way, by their meeting in, at the end of October, You've heard whatever you're supposed to hear, and then you're able to come to some kind of conclusion and make a decision on the application. I mean, I, I think that's a way we can accommodate this. You know, if I hadn't had experience with a soil scientist, I've never met him in my life. I don't know who he is. However, however, it is relevant because between you and me, I do this a lot, and if I'm going to come to a commission. And, and ask for a continuation, and I'm not the applicant, I would have a little bit of a description of why. This is not a description of why. Let me what he says. A preliminary analysis. Well, what is that? Was he, I mean, where was he? When was he on the site? I would say, I was on the site and I spent two hours on this date. I dug some uh, tests around me. I mean, what's a preliminary analysis? That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, he says has revealed several wetland related concerns. Well, why don't you tell us what those are? Those are great phrases. <coughs> I got the concerns, you know. Yeah. The doctor, I got concerns about my health. What are they? I don't know. Yeah, I got concerns. Um, so that including but not limited to the lack of a certified <coughs> wetland boundary. Well, that's just downright false. I will tell you, which is not unusual in my reports from Dr. Dan where he will sometimes go to sources that don't exist. So I got a little problem with this statement that these are for, I'm not the wetland scientist. I'm, you know, I know the gentleman we work with, you've used his work extensively in the staff. But for this, this letter to say that these are not certified, he's just saying that the work that this guy did is uncertified. He didn't say might be in question. He didn't say would be subject to some sort of negotiation. We'll get to the data. Okay. I'm just saying that this is the worst request I have <coughs> seen for this type of extension. And I'm a little outraged only because I've been down the road with this consultant before. And I've seen the work that he has done. So I hate to bring up old, old gripes, but if, if there were a reason here, um, he looks forward to submitting and presenting his findings. Well, that's great. I mean, so then we can sort of start all over again, because in October, if we get his findings, and of course our soil science, and of course we go back to Wright Pierce, and we can just start all over again in October. That's my We're going to go back to Wright Pierce. Wright Pierce is done with this. Well, yeah, beat based on this data, but between you and me. But what is the soil science? What, 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 right, what, what, what expertise does he have to be discussing engineering principles? Right, but I think the important thing is, is that why does this go to this the soil science? This development has no impact on that because of the watershed. And I think that's everybody's missing a big point there. But that's the problem. 
So the answer is the applicant is unwilling to do this. So it doesn't really matter what my personal feelings are, but I will tell you that I understand why. That's why I asked this afternoon, uh, you know, quite honestly, we had this uh, 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 communication this afternoon. And there's no, this is not a compelling reason for you guys to have a special meeting, actually. It's not there. One second, Mr. I'm, I'm having one bit of difficulty here. And you know, I, am, I am hearing you say that you're, you're taking this one individual soil scientist and saying it's no good because it's coming from the side. Yeah. Don't answer me. No. Nope. Yes. Okay. This isn't good for any soil scientist. Okay. But he, the, the soil scientist wants to present his information, and we as a commission don't feel comfortable making a decision until we hear his information. We are not trying to put this off again and again and again. We want to get it, we want to get it finalized. But we do not feel comfortable making a decision until we hear the information from the other soil scientist. We're not saying that your soil scientist is wrong or incorrect or doesn't have you know, professional qualities. These are two different soil scientists with two different opinions. And as a commission, we feel we need to hear from both scientists and then make our decision. Okay. But I'm saying any soil scientist that uses the phrase that these plans lack a certified wetland boundary is just wrong. I don't care who it is. And, but it's not unusual because I've seen it work. Well, let's you know, leave that out of it. So let's, <laughs> let's go back to, as I am pulling the report from Davis and Environmental with my hands, yes. dated August, uh, the date of the work is uh, that here August 8, 2018. If it were mentioned in this report that there would be no adverse impacts to either the pond or to the wetlands that he flagged on the property to the north, it would be in here. Um, That's not correct. Because he hasn't even seen the site development plan, so how would he know if there's any impact or not? The real issue is did he depict the soils correctly? Attached is a sketch map showing the areas delineated. This map is, uh, and I quote, attached is a sketch map showing the areas delineated. This map is intended for surveying purposes only. The location and extent of wetlands is approximate. That's correct. That's what they are. That's what they are. They're approximate. So why can't we have some some read an embellishment of that fact from an additional soil scientist that perhaps can reinforce what Mr. Davison has already said. Because if anything, that would work in the applicant's favor. But the commission can't be certain that that, ex that exists without having that information from him. But I think what we're saying is that we want to be fair to both sides. The applicant has presented plenty of information. The public has now come forth with new information which we believe we need to hear in order to make a fair decision. But the problem is, is you say, the applicant's been doing this for four months, or five months, and, uh, four months. and the, the, the public doesn't get a better shot at it because that's why we have the regulations on timing. It's to avoid exactly what's happening here. As I say, you're fundamental. I am not but envious of your position because you're saying, well, what's this guy going to say? But the real question is, you got to use your common sense on that one. Go look at the site we're talking about. I, as I say, given another site, given a, a larger um, wetlands area that could be impacted by a more major development, then maybe I'd see your quandary a little bit better. But I don't, I think you've got to put this in perspective with what we're talking about. We have uh, less than an acre and a half development with uh, no indication that even the, the wetlands line on the west is different. That is, Mike said, that the waters don't flow that direction. I, I just don't understand why. It's like somebody has held up a carrot here in, in to, to get you to, to grab at it, and you're not looking at what he's even saying, and he's good at what he said. He is telling you exactly what he did, which is basically not much. Mr. Marcus, we would be still working within the statutory time frame that's been allotted by our regs and that we have a normal 65-day period 
to hear the site plan review, and then we have 65 days of the extension time. And where are we? So we have only used 35 of those 65 days. We still have 30 days left of extension period. Only if the applicant wants to. And that's what we're that. asking the project. Right. Let's let the applicant. Right. So but, 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 but I don't... But what, is, what is the... Excuse me for interrupting for me. Okay. So if, he, if they don't grant you the extension, what is the drop dead date? October 2nd. Well, why don't we get something from Dr. Danzer by October 2nd and make that decision? Because we need to hear it. Or do you want to hear his presentation? October 2nd. They're not going to make a decision that night, Neil. You know that. Well, then we can decide whether it should be an uh, extension. Let's hear it on October 2nd. When is October 2nd? That's next week. Next Wednesday. Yeah. This is not a big job to do, quite honestly. It's a small site. That's if it's dead. But if we hear about October 2nd, yeah. we're still going to need an extension. Right. Because we cannot make a decision. We can that make wait, that wait, 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 decision wait, wait, wait. on October 2nd. Wait. Quite honest. I, I think the game plan we that I had. We can no, make that. I, I think the game plan we had was better for you. That you, whatever he's putting in writing or whatever he's going to do, that I think that he gets the drop dead date of submitting it to you two weeks before the end of the month. You know, we do a meeting in the middle of October or the first, you know, sometime in October. Eric has time to review whatever this man is going to say. I, I mean, is he just, I don't know if he's just flagging wetlands, is he doing a, a feature and value report or anything? I, I, no I don't idea. know what he's doing. I have no idea. You know, so I, I see your point of view, Neil. But again, I'm going back to the accommodation. The commission's asking you to accommodate this, and if you choose not to, um, and you're going to say no, please put it in writing and leave it with them this evening. So that way I can discuss it with council because I've never, I've never seen, I've been doing this for not 40 years, probably close to 30, but I've Even never this seen, seen an extension. Often. I haven't before seen you like that, I'd be very honest, okay. but I have Usually never, ever, yeah, sure. I've never seen an extension not be granted. Here. But, but I, I just I, I've never I saw one last week. Yeah. If this is outrageous, then it comes at the last minute and doesn't say anything. That's the problem. Is to say if I were going to do this, yeah, I would give you a bunch of real good reasons to have pressure the applicant to give an extension. But there are no reasons at all. In reality. Except for we'd like you to think that maybe you're making a mistake. No, we're giving you a reason. We want to hear what that soil scientist has to say. Well, as I say, if he comes in on October second, your soil scientist does not have time to make. That's correct. But on October second, we can decide whether the thing should be continued because there's a legitimate issue. That's what I'm saying. Right now, there's no legitimate issue. It's just a delay. It's an imposition. And by the way, it's an imposition on use. I'm as offended that this is happening to you as to the applicant. It's not right. Not the way we do it. Both sides. But it's not a it's not a last minute thing on our part. Like I keep no, telling no, you. No, 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 no. It's an imposition on we're, the we're, it may be it may be an imposition to a degree, but what we're trying to do is accommodate all parties. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, we have uh, the applicant has no interest in the extension. All right, can we have a recess? Mr. Chairman, can we have a five minute recess? Yes, we'll call five minutes. Try to accommodate the, the, the interests that are really conflicting at this point. And I went back and again I met and talked with, with Mike uh, Duco. There's not much to analyze in the request because it's pretty thin. But to the extent that the focus area proposed by Dr. Danzer, and assuming that he is being um, being uh, honest and sincere in his issues, um, we can figure out absolutely no reason why the commission, given the hydrology of the site, would actually have any concerns about the lines drawn on the St. Mary's property for the weather because from an environmental 
perspective or a hydrological perspective, perspective <laughs> there is nothing that's going to occur on the applicant's site that's going to impact the wetlands on the St. Mary's property. And, uh, and of course, the that's the whole focal point of continuing this. <coughs> Unfortunately, we're not in a position to request an extension. The applicant, uh, as I say, for all the reasons particularly outlined by our engineer, uh, feels that, that uh, it's doable for improper reasons. He will not extend the time voluntarily. Um, the, you heard some of my personal concerns about the drafting of the request. Um, and I still am a little bit miffed that uh, one soil scientist can act subtly another soil scientist work. Uh, that so bothers me um, without giving any real justification. So at this point, it's tough on the commission, it's tough on the applicants, and it may be tough on the neighbors, but uh, we're going to have to uh, finish the application in accordance with the statutory time period. Um, and of course, the commission does have the option. They don't have to decide this tonight. Um, they can call a special meeting between now and next week. Uh, they could go back and tell Dr. Danza to submit to them before that special meeting, and we'll deal with those issues at that point if, if the occasion arises. I'm not in favor of that uh, particular plan, but I think that, um, honestly speaking, if this commission were to decide based on the information that's before it this evening, there would be no reason not to grant the application but based on the information and review from your consultants. If it turns out that, that somebody comes along and says that this application is in fact false, that it is, it's just what is false, then your decision, if you were to approve this, would never be upheld by a court. So if there's something that, that Dr. Danzer can come along and say that I can show you how this is actually a false application, which is what he's suggesting here, um, that uh, the application uh, has revealed the concerns of the lack of certified uh, plan. Uh, if that's in fact true, then the decision that you will make would be subject to a further review on the basis of the information submitted to quality. But I don't believe that's the case. Uh, I know that the engineering has already passed review by your consultant. Um, and at this point, uh, to question the integrity of the soil scientist is just not a reason to uh, extend the application. I think you rely on these professionals, and if one professional wants to attack another professional, this is not the place to do it. There's a better place. So I think that that's the decision. So, so let's get a consensus from the committee here. We have until October 22nd, or October 2nd, excuse me, um, without the applicant granting us an extension for us to make a decision. Our next, um, October 2nd falls in the winter. Do we have, just to get a show of hands here, do, um, do we have a consensus that we can have a special meeting on September 30th, that is next Monday, for us to perhaps receive Mr. Danger's report or findings, have a special meeting just for this application that night? I'll be out of town next week. Okay. On September 30th? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you going to be in contact with him to let him know we have to I will do that as seven. soon as I get out of this meeting. <coughs> I'm in. Yeah, well, I'm in. Okay, so I have three. Um, um. Okay. So we have three is a quorum, so I will be fourth is, okay. I do yeah. have a question, though. Yes. Will we have more information presented? 
is it possible to have more information presented? Well, that's, what it's that's, for. That's, that's going to be a question for Mr. Danzer. If you can compare a report in time for that special meeting, I will let you know. But without you know, having him uh, informed him of that, that we are going to be having a special meeting on September 30th, I, I can't say for sure. But that's when we would have a special meeting for this. I will reach out to him after this meeting is done to ask him if he would be available to either give testimony in person and or to have a report ready for the commission's review that night or some kind of document to that effect. But I think that's what basically the commission was asking for, to be able to hear what he has to say. Um, I hope the public understands that we are trying to accommodate both sides. Um, we, we need to hear from your person, um, but it has to be done before October 2nd. So um, Dave will contact your soil scientists and hopefully get him in next Thursday so we can hear what he has to say. We really need to hear, no matter what anybody says about this man, he's another scientist in the commission. Um, owes it to the public to hear that side. We're not saying there's anything wrong with what your soil scientist has said, but as a commission, we feel we need to hear both sides. And we'll try to do it within that 35 days, which would be on the 30th. Do, do I have a motion that we will schedule a special meeting on September 30th? So moved. 7 o'clock. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. We'll have that meeting on the 30th. Okay. That's can I, can I just say something, Neil? I think. There was a little, um, um, as far as Eric Davidson and his work as a soil scientist, there was an inference that maybe the commission um, didn't have uh, uh, good ratings or good feelings about his work in the past. And, I, and on behalf of the commission, just because of previous experiences I had as an in the wetlands agent, um, I'm familiar with Eric, and these guys are familiar with Eric too. And they're not questioning, questioning his credibility or anything pertaining to no, the no, services that he provides. Yeah, I just want to make that clear. That's what I tried that's to why say. a little bit. You got a little, little hot, magic. and I thought that, you know, you were making some inferences that I just wanted to make sure, for the record. Don't, don't raise it again. Yeah. Don't raise it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other discussions that we need to have on this tonight? Not with this, no. I think we're done okay. with this. Again, you are welcome to come next, next Monday. Um, the only speaking will be done by the soil scientist, and then the commission will discuss it and make a decision. But you're welcome to come and listen. Um, okay. And just so everybody's clear, the meeting will start at our normal time, 7, 7 o'clock? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you. Tim and Neil and, and public, thank you also. Thank you.